Hey everyone, uh, this is going to be a quick overview of my build in the Supt Huddle. Uh, Supt is a sister brand of Lian Li. This case is not new. It came out sometime, I want to say late, maybe Q3, Q4 last year. I did receive it at that point, um, but I never got around to doing anything in its own now. I was kind of waiting for 5000 series cards, and unfortunately, I still don't have any water blocks. I have the cards, I just don't have the water blocks. Um, so we still have to go with the 4000 series here. Uh, this build was a quick put together. Uh, I, I literally spent a day and a half. Um, so this is going to be on display at um, ETS in Montreal, the LAN event. So if you're going, uh, you will see this there. And you can feel free to take a closer look. Uh, I just want to quickly talk about the water cooling support in this case. And my general considerations for this case, it's not going to be an uh, in-depth review or anything because there's a lot of those online already on YouTube because the case has been out for a while. Um, but I just want to quickly go over some of the things that I found out while building in it. Okay, so let's just quickly get started. Uh, the case by default has several fan locations. You have a three 120 millimeter at the bottom, three 120 millimeter on the side, or you can consider just the bottom because the case does rotate. I'll put a photo up so you guys can see what I'm talking about. The case can be orientated with this side facing on the bottom. You just have to move the feet. Okay, and then you have uh, two one millimeter, two 120 millimeter fan mounts on the side here. I've used one of those positions to mount um, a pump res 120. This essentially is a Bits Power CR 120, non slim. Uh, the non slims and the slims, for those of you that don't know the difference, aside from the reservoir portion being slimmer, is the slim ones come with uh, their own version of DDCs, and the full fat versions come with their own version of D5s. Uh, that is a pu custom printed pump cover. You're not going to see that uh, on the standard bits power ones. Uh, so just to clear up any confusion. Um, now, in terms of radiator support, uh, assuming you're not trying to make your life difficult by putting one here, um, you have essentially a 360 that can fit in the bottom and a 360 that can fit on the side. With that said, ne neither radiator can go past 25 millimeters. If you go past 25 millimeters, what will happen is the fan will hit into the other radiator. This is why with the 45 millimeter radiator here, I don't have that issue because I'm using one. Now, for those of you wondering, well, is that enough? Technically, given that this is a 265K Intel, which runs extremely cool, and this is 4080, that's actually enough. Uh, realistically speaking, it's enough. Um, but, I understand, you know, people see one radiator these days, they think they need more, but I guarantee you it's enough. And also this is more of a for display build. It's not for daily use, um, but I keep my display builds practical. I want to stress that. <laughs> a lot of people that make display builds that don't work aren't practical at all. Uh, that is not me. Okay, so with that said, uh, let's quickly go into loop components. Now we'll start here. Like I was saying earlier, this is a CR Bits Power 120. It's pumping out into the bottom distro, up into the GPU in, from the, or reversible, these are reversible. GPU out, coming back down, into the radiator. This is a Bits Power Leviathan XF 360, which essentially is, I think, a GTR hardware labs. All right, and then it comes out the other side, coming down, into the CPU in, out through the CPU out, and then go back into the pump res. Um, the board itself is an ASUS B860A Strix. Uh, this is a fairly new board. I think it came out sometime late at the end of last month was when, you know, people started getting them reviewers wise. Uh, but you could definitely, you know, find them. Uh, I don't know if they're actually available outside of the ASUS store at the moment. But it is a white board and um, it comes at a under under 300. So if, if you're looking for something a little bit cheaper, but still white, and you kind of want your Strix ROG branding, this is kind of the board for you. Although I would say comparing, because this is for Intel, I would say your other option at this price point is the Z890 Tough Pro Wi-Fi. And that is, I think, literally a 10 bucks more. Or, or $20. And uh, honestly, I think that's the better board, to be honest, uh, for a couple bucks more. But if you want the Strix look, that board is also white and silver, more silvery than white. And this board is, I guess, more whitish than silver. Actually, it's still kind of whitish silver. But anyway, I digress. So with that said, uh, I'm going to quickly talk about these fans later, uh, like I was saying earlier. Um, yeah, these fans, um, and you know, let's just bring it up now. Uh, these are... Um, 
I got these from Astral PC at Computex 2024. So I've been sitting on them for quite some time. Um, I did try them out before. Uh, I didn't use them because the software was trash. And I'll show you guys why in a second. Uh, but it hasn't seemed to have improved. And now they're being sold under iGo. Um, and I think it's the same software from what I see online. We'll go over the software and we'll see that while wow, these are very cool, they have huge potential, but the software and the hub, everything is just not so great. Okay, so I'm just gonna show you guys the front here, because I think a lot of folks, when they see this case, they've seen it in the orientation where this is the bottom. So from, my, from this view, it might look like, well, how are you plugging everything in? And we'll just go into that in a second here. Look at the front of the case. Um, this part actually removes out, uh, you can, there's two of these, one on the bottom, one on the side. And you can pop this out and what you'll do is you'll connect everything and then you'll run it through the hole in the side here and you'll run it through the back and you can plug everything like that. That's, that's kind of the way it's designed to work. Or you can just easily still accessible if you want to plug into the front. No, to be honest, no one's stopping you. You can do this however you like. Um, this is, I guess, technically the front slash top. Right, because if you had it on standing up, this would also be the top. You have a power button, you have um, a reboot, and then you have some of the fan control and RGB lighting switching if you're not using motherboard sync. Uh, this does come off, so let me see if I can unlock this. Okay, so if I remove this, actually I don't like this mechanism at all, um, but you know, it's not, it's not a major deal. Uh, you can see that I have a poorly wired RAN temp sensor here just for the uh, reservoir. Uh, this is a drain valve. Um, so this is pretty much the CR120 I was talking about. Now you can see that you can technically put, you know, you can see that there is space here technically, right? That you can run the 360. But, you know, you're going to also be running into PCI issues here, like your graphics card. So it's going to be hard to connect because if you really think about it, if I were to take a ruler, uh, hold on, if I were to take a ruler here, you'll see that you have... You have 60 millimeters of space, right? So 60 millimeters of space, you can technically put a 25 millimeter radiator or a super slim 20, and then a 25 millimeter fan, you have 45 millimeters, and you still have 15 millimeters, which is, you guys wanna know, it's that much. So technically, you could still do a 90 degree cable out, but um, I don't know. I, I don't see why you would wanna go through all that hassle. <laughs> to add another radiator here. So I think this is probably a better spot for your FLT because you got that cut out at the front where you can have a, you know, kind of a rectangular pump res and still have that, um, you know, functionality. Now, if you're wondering why I didn't use a larger one, uh, it's because I, I found out for the thicker FLTs, if you use the stock mounting brackets, it's well the bits power ones at least, you're gonna hit this PCIe bracket right here. And that's why I'm using a 120 and not a 240, all right? So, like I said, there is radiator options here. That's a little bit more on the struggle side. Uh, but obviously for an AIO, it might be a little easier. You, know, you could fit a 240 AIO fairly easy here. So if you had, let's say, your GPU as an AIO, you could run it on this side. And your CPU, you could run it as another side. Right. So if you have dual AIO, CPU, GPU, it can work out for you pretty well. So I want to quickly go over the rear before I move into the fans. Um, well, this is the rear or bottom, depending on how you want to look at it. Um, but you can here see that there's a dust filter here. Uh, so if you're wondering why the power outlet is over here is because this is actually going into extending to the power supply, which is sitting upright. And that allows you to plug it in this way. Uh, without this kind of uh, adapter cord uh, for the positioning, you would be plugging in the PSU direct from the bottom when it's from this side it on the bottom here when this is standing you know upright so that kind of clears up any confusion here um the only thing i do wish they had included was maybe you know if you're going to have it in this position like i do to kind of maybe include a plastic panel to kind of clean this up because otherwise this looks i mean it looks like the back of a computer case but it's not the back of a computer case um so i don't know i mean it looks a little bit convoluted and i think that's why a lot of people have it standing up. So I think if they could clean up the shelves on both sides, it would look a lot better. Uh, the case does support BTF wiring management. Um, I'll show you guys my wires. It's a total mess because like I said, day and a half, right? But I'll show you guys real quick. 
So here's the mess of wires, <laughs> called the back. Um, but yeah, this can definitely be cleaned up a little bit. I will clean it up a little bit before shipping it out. Um, but uh, you can see that I had to use the stock PSU cables because I couldn't bend it over. Uh, it was just too much of a narrow bend. So, and these cables, I didn't do them to length, so they're longer than they should be. Obviously, if you're building this and you're getting custom cables like this, you should do them to length, not these are generic from another set. Um, so, with that said, uh, you can see that there are some hard drive mounting points. You do have tie downs, not enough to be honest, but these things are, will do. But if you had put like 2.55, like 3.5 HDDs over here, uh, there's another bracket. I think there's another bracket. There's another drive bracket that goes here if you wanted to mount hard drives here. Uh, but I've used it for this gigantic fan controller. It's the world's largest fan controller ever uh, for those three fans. It actually supports 10 fans or eight, which is kind of insane, but you know, it takes up all the space over here. Um, but yeah, so you do have, let me see how much space you have here. You have about 28 millimeters from the back to the door. So it's not a lot, but it's good enough, right? So, and you can see here that you do have the BTF cutouts should you want to use BTF, right, for MATX and ATX. Um, so the case is functional, uh, it's, it's unique. But with that said, let's move on to the fans and we'll close this video out. So here we have the fan controller software. Uh, it says Exastra, because I think that's the company that rebranded these fans. Um, they're actually identical, so I don't think they made any changes, but they do sell them on their AIOs and they sell them in a three pack. Uh, but here's the software. You can see that I have the three fans. It picks up three. Uh, I don't have more of them. I'm guessing there'll be more. You can group these together, right? You can see that for fan one, I have set the CPU. And you have other choices like day, time, clock, fan speed, which I found doesn't work um, because it technically has to read it from your motherboard. But then I find the motherboard fan control doesn't work. So uh, you can obviously change the colors. You can't do RGB if you're using a preset mode like CPU temp. Now, if I go into, say, um, this one and I go to pixel screen, it's scrolling time right now, you can draw your own, right, uh, by pixel, by color. Uh, the great thing about this is, the annoying thing about this is here is that, um, not great, but like, let's say I made a mistake here. I can't undo it unless I wanted to go paint that black to white or if it's blue blank, paint it back to black. Uh, I have to do this undo all the way back to where it was. And if you click this recycle, it deletes the entire thing. So if you had done it partially and you go, oh shoot, I messed up somewhere. You have to remember the color codes you picked, paint that one back to black and then set it back to the color you had. You can't just click one and, un and delete it. And this is kind of a select, which I don't even know what that does right? Uh, you can adjust how many blocks you want to do at once, right? So this is even more blocks. So that that's okay, but I really don't even know what this does. Like you can see, oh, you can change the color of an entire grid. Okay. So that's what that does. But you can see that it's, it's hard to delete anything. You literally have to, for example, let's say I wanted to draw a smiley face in the middle. I'd have to make this all black and then, you know, is it even, I'm oh, sorry, uh, make it all black and then do something like this. Or if you mess up, paint it back to black. It's just not very intuitive. Uh, it does take the importing of ANI files, uh, which essentially is animated mouse cursor files. I don't know the file size. If you upload one that's too large, it just won't work. So there's no real specifications for file size that it allows. Uh, the animation effect, um, I don't even know. Like, it just shows nothing. I, I don't even know what this does. I was messing around with it. I couldn't get it to work. Um, but it does have some built-in ones like the slime, right? You can see that you can adjust the speed. Uh, so I think if you guys watch my Computex or see maybe other people's Computex, you may have seen the Pac-Man, right? So obviously if, you, if you're into pixel art, you can kind of definitely do something cool. Um, it's just, you know, like I said, it's gonna be a little bit painstaking and you can't copy paste, right? So for example, if I, if I want to just make some changes on this light, I can't just copy it and paste it and duplicate it. I have to draw it all over again. Uh, it's just, that just doesn't make a lot of sense, right? So the, there's the customization for the screen. It's, it's limited and it really needs improvement. Uh, things like the RGB light, this is fine, right? It does work with MB Sync. Although I don't know, I guess reverse is the direction, right? But I have it set to MB Sync, so whatever. That works. 
Fan settings, okay. This is another thing where fan follow mode is essentially where I believe it works with the motherboard, right? But it doesn't actually work. And if I go to silent mode, it's just this. It shows you, I guess, a little bit over 50% fan. If I go to game mode, it's 100% fan. And there's no adjustability in the middle. You see that, guys? Like nothing. If I go to custom mode, you figure I will be able to do points, right? Like temperature, I have different, you know, data points. But no, it's just literally up and down. That's it. So there's nothing in the middle. And when you have motherboard fan control that doesn't work, um, you essentially just end up with a static fan speed, which is kind of um, poor implementation. So I don't know if there's a non-hub version. or You kind of need the hub to control the sides. But you can see that this is not... This is for the AIO and the air cooler. I guess the air cooler is this way. Uh, but you can see that this is not ideal um, in terms of software. That's why I was saying it, it's functional, but it's not. It's cute, but it doesn't exactly work out too well, right? Because you essentially have no fan control. Um, but otherwise, custom, you can, you can rotate it if you want. Um, the animation would be whatever, you know, like slime or whatever it may be. So... Uh, the, it is what it is. So those of you that are interested in these, picking up these fans, this is how it is. Um, I haven't seen the any updates. But with that said, uh, thanks for watching. Um, moving on, I'll probably go back to the TT mod uh, that I was working on. Keep being distracted by it. Um, I will cover... Okay, so we have some new ASUS boards in March. Um, I will cover those. And along with the TT mod, and that's pretty much what will be coming on next. Uh, you see some builds in the ASUS boards that are coming out, and um, more of TT mod. So with that said, thanks for watching. Stay safe.